Steam. The number one place for getting all the big name PC games as well as the hot indie games. It's thanks to Steam that a lot of indie devs got a spotlight and a place to present their hard work. But not everything gets notoriety. In fact, some games straight up crash and burn. The tree falls and no one hears it. Indie game development is a harsh business. You either make it big or you go absolutely nowhere and spend a lot of money and time in the process. You can spend years on what you consider to be your masterpiece, your crowning achievement, only for no Nobody to play it. We're going to talk about such a story. A multiplayer shooter game that was in early access for two years with constant updates. Everything put together perfectly to make a solid, fun third person shooter, and nobody cared. And on December 2021, it will receive its last update, and the dev will abandon it forever. A game that will die, and no one will show up at the funeral. This is the story of Fade Out Underground, the game that Steam forgot. Once upon a time, there was an indie dev with a dream, Weston Mitchell, also known as Pandan. On December of 2018, he started on a single-player Metroidvania with the name Fade Out. This featured a character with a lantern traversing through a dark mine, avoiding enemies. Pandan worked on this project until October of 2019, when he would tell his Discord server, quote, I'm done working on it. In January of 2020, Pandan began teaching himself networking and decided to turn the Fade Out concept into an online game. The first couple tests came out janky and laggy and only featured one character, but these early tests would help jumpstart what was to come. In February 2020, Fade Out Underground, as it was now called, would become a third-person arena shooter. The third-person aspect was a leftover from the scrap single-player game. That game had a sneak mechanic, so it was important to see where your character was at all times, therefore it was third person. And so Fade Out Underground was born, and here it is in action. The game borrows a lot from other multiplayer games like Team Fortress 2 and Unreal Tournament, but instead you get a cast of funny animals. There's a plethora of game modes that all borrow from other arena shooters like Deathmatch, CTF, Conquest, and Arena with team variants of Arena and Deathmatch. And you have four maps to play around in. You have Mech Canyon, a big wide open town with plenty of snipe points. You've got Battlefield, which is a classic two fort vibe to it with two bases and a bridge connecting them. There's Fortress that has plenty of rooms and tunnels to play around in. And finally Temple, which is a small map with a building in the center and a lower section covered in trees. But where the real meat and potatoes lies is the characters. Like TF2, they all have their own unique weapons. However, they can also save for one character, pick up standard weapons found in the map. You've got Camille, which has a strong melee pickaxe and is able to throw remote bombs. She can also place a bomb directly under her and use its concussion to reach new areas, quite like the rocket jump or the sticky jump. You can even spam them in the air constantly if you have enough health. Also, she has a hard hat that's bigger than her head. I mean, what more do you want? Then there's Friday. Friday. Shut up! Don't do my man Pandan like that. Friday is a battle medic that has a revolver that both heals allies and poisons enemies. She's also the fastest runner and can double jump and get to areas other players can't. Here's what Pandan had to say about Friday. Friday's first iteration was about throwing vials of poison. Green vials healing, yellow vials doing damage over time. People liked the poison part, but I wanted her to be more combo-y and less spammy. So I tried making the poison deal less damage, but apply a melee weakness to the target. This was fun because this encouraged people to poison targets from afar, then run up close to deal lots of damage with her kick. Eventually, these poisons and healing were combined into one weapon, the healing magnum. This thing could heal, apply a poison, and increase melee damage in one package. Dalton is the sniper. Yep. He's the sniper, all right. I joke, but he's got a pretty good melee, too. Abigail is the engineer, uh, the tinkerer, and she can place not one, but two turrets at a time. When you place them, they pop up almost instantly. But don't worry, they don't have very much health. She also has melee and her own shotgun. Bingo is the stealth character. He can cloak like a spy, but he only has a pistol and a dagger. However, the dagger does pretty good damage. And when you use the dagger, you dash forward a little bit. There's actually an exploit you could do jump forward and hit the walls with the dagger. If you do it enough times, you can go crazy fast. However, you're not cloaked while you're using the weapons. And remember, even though the pistol ain't much, Bingo can still pick up guns around him. Now, Hemlock has a harpoon gun and a pretty powerful pistol. If you shoot someone with the harpoon gun, they'll bleed and you'll get a speed buff you can use to come at them with your strong melee attack. Blaze is an interesting one. She originally was a pyro character with a flamethrower, but now she has a baseball bat, a flaming barrel, and 
an SMG, and they all have ridiculous names. The Ban Appeal, The Private Message, and I shit you not, The Simp, which stands for Small Insignificant Machine Pistol. And finally, there's Charlie the Panda, which is the oddest one of the group. She has several different melee attacks that all cost energy from an energy meter and cannot pick up guns. Despite that, she takes hardly any damage from bullets, so the best way to take her out is melee. She might be the most overpowered character in the game. I asked Pandin to give me some insight on her inclusion, and he said this. I wanted a Demo Knight-style character in the game, something that was a shake-up to the shooter game. Inspired by World of Warcraft's Monk Tank class, Brewmaster, I thought adding that mechanic of delaying damage could make a melee character viable in an online shooter game, where otherwise gun is greater than fist. She was always meant to be a game-breaker, fourth-wall-breaking character, and is not lore canon. There's lore to the arena shooter? Hell yeah, it's a game with furries in it! You bet your ass there's lore! The game centers around an evil mining company called Orchard that enslaves people to work in their minds with the ultimate goal to uncover some ancient underground ruins. Camille and Abigail started Fade Out as a resistance group against Orchard. Hemlock and Blaze are part of Orchard, and Bingo is Camille's mysterious simp- I'm sorry. And that's the biggest chunk of it, short but sweet. Of course, you can dig even deeper into it by checking out Fade Out's Discord server. Now you may be looking at my gameplay footage and be saying, wow, this guy cannot play for shit. And you're right, I'm awful at shooter games. I love them, but I suck at them and often get kicked from servers because I'm so bad. So that's on me. I do not claim to be a god at shooters. So yeah, well, what do you think so far? Does this game not sound amazing? It sure does to me. In fact, the game is only missing one thing, but it's the most critical and important thing of all for a multiplayer game. Other players. The footage you have been seeing has been a mix of both my friends and the Fade Out Discord server members. And this is the closest the game has ever come to having one full server just one. Even after Panda dumping tons of time and money into advertising and marketing for this wonderful game, not a soul plays it. And it's been this way since the beginning. Why? How could it be possible that such a good game could not have anybody actually playing? Well, let's look into why Fade Out didn't succeed. Well, it could be a number of things. The algorithms not being kind with the game, there's too much competition and not enough people willing to give an indie multiplayer game a shot. Or maybe it's just, it costs a lot more to advertise indie games than what Pandan is able to do. Some could argue it's the game itself, but how can you say that when nobody's played it in the first place to even find out if it's good or not? Hell, the Steam page has less than 100 reviews and most of them are glowing. So the game must be good, right? Well, nevertheless, whatever the reason, Fade Out lies dormant, waiting for someone to give it a chance to prove itself. A wait that has been two years going and Pandan finally decided after so long of so little progress, it was time to throw in the towel on Fade Out. In September, he announced on the Steam page and elsewhere that Fade Out Underground would receive its very last update in December of 2021, at which point it would be put into support mode, left at the mercy of the community, and would no longer be updated. The game would still be up and playable though, so you can still play it. Did I mention this game is free? Pandan had plenty to say on the subject and his reasons for quitting Fade Out turned out to be much more than just lack of interest from the community. He says, I gave myself an ultimatum. If the game doesn't see a 2x increase in players by December, close up shop, and it's not on track to get there. Not even close. He also added that the game being made in Unreal Engine 4 had contributed a lot to stopping development. While it is very fast to develop games in the engine, it's got its fair share of disadvantages, like the inability to add mod support. Games like TF2, CS, Quake, UT, etc. They all thrive on mod support. After you compile, you cannot easily run code outside the game, and setting that up for multiplayer is even harder. In Unity or Source Engine, you have flexibility in this department. Another reason is Unreal 4's development environments are very large. Up to 40 or 70 gigabytes for the engine source code required to compile for most platforms, plus project source. This made it impossible for me to distribute the game source to hire help, like mapping help, or even hiring a VFX artist, etc. Making me have to be the only inlet to the game's development space. So in a nutshell, lack of players, interest, 
Mod support is impossible, difficult to develop with teammates, and I'm the only developer. Pandan also shared with me how much it costs to make the game. Now, considering the game is free, the only thing he can make money off is the soundtrack and the cosmetic pass. And if you crunch the numbers, he didn't even make enough to make up for the advertising. So if you've ever wondered how much money it costs to make an indie game and stick with it, there you go. And on the bottom, we see how many people installed the game and how many actually played it. It really is sad to look at because this game deserves so much more. But guys, I guess it just goes to show you that not everybody makes it big in the indie game industry. So you're probably wondering, what's going to happen to Fade Out now? Well, things actually have been happening. Really cool things, in fact. In a move that could only be described as going out with a bang, Pandan added a new, extremely fun game mode to Fade Out, Randomizer. In this mode, you spawn with a random character random weapons, random ammo, and a random maximum health. That means that a character can spawn with another character's weapons and then some. And playing this mode turns a match into hell on earth and is extremely fun and funny. A very excellent just for fun game mode. Plus, he's steadily adding new costumes to the costume pass, giving you more bang for your buck. It seems like he wants to make sure this game is as good as it possibly can be before he leaves it be. Now, if that don't make you want to download this game, I don't know what will. Uh, uh, how about if you pay him enough money, he'll put your furry OC in it. I made that part up. And that, my friends, is the story of Fade Out Underground, a game that, true to its name, will probably fade out into obscurity. However, this is not the end of the road for Pandan. In fact, Weston Pandan Mitchell is already making plans for his next big game project. This time, it's in Unity, and it's a single-player action platformer like Jack 2 and 3. And that's all he's saying at the moment. Also, it was thanks to Fade Out that Pandan was hired to work at Blind Squirrel Games to do 3D work on Sonic Colors Ultimate. So Fade Out got him a job. How about that? I asked Pandan if he had any words to say to people looking into getting into game development and he had this to say. When I graduated college in 2017, I didn't know how to code. I was a 3D animator. I learned how to code JavaScript in 2017 at a job working in advertising. I think anyone can learn how to code, and it only took me a year to really translate that knowledge into games. I did game jams for about a year before I even started Fade Out. My advice is do game jams. Even if you don't complete them, it will level you up. So everybody make sure to join the Fade Out Discord to see what Pandan is up to now, and to cheer him on as he both puts the final touches on Fade Out and begins his new adventure in game development. And if you would be so kind, get some friends together, try Fade Out for yourself. It's free. What's the worst that could happen? You have fun? Because that's what you're gonna do. Until next time everybody, I'm Stuart K. Riley, and this was Games That Steam Forgot. If you like what you saw, consider being a patron. I got $1 and $5 tiers, and $5 patrons see my videos before anyone else. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again.